Okay, what did I say a few videos ago about how I have a problem with convincing myself that I can take my time to do projects and I don't have to get them all done now, now, now? Well, here I am. It's this, the same day as I record all the other ones. I just played Animal Crossing, did my most basic things, and that now I'm here to finish dressing the last three dolls today. But that does mean that I am um, lessening the push the pressure on myself to get that repainted doll done, 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 so it could be included in all this stuff. So I can actually maybe even let myself put that doll I'm repainting into the project box to just stew for you know, maybe a few years like all the other dolls in that box. Most of the dolls in that box either need really, really heavy, like epoxy putty and airbrush type body mods or reroutes. So that's why they're in that box indefinitely. Well, dolls like this get put together straight away. All right, so last three dolls, they all have standard fashionistas, articulated fashionistas Barbie bodies, so it's like the belly button torso, more or less. So I have loads of things that should fit them. So the first one is this Mycene Chelsea head on the body. The skin tone match is not perfect, but it's Mattel, so it's pretty good. I knew what to think of my scene when they were out. I recognize that their style was very interesting and unusual, a little more trendy than most Barbies. I was not fond of the face paint, but there are actually a few different kinds of my scene face paint, and this one is a little more stylized because, as you can see, she's kind of side glance but it's mostly because her pupils are painted side glance within her irises as well as the irises being painted side glance anyway so i thought that was a really weird design decision when these dolls were new but now i appreciate it as being a really interesting bit of stylization in the barbie line all right so what's she gonna wear She has very neutral makeup, pink lips, but like I said, I shouldn't, shouldn't go necessarily by the makeup color. That's something I gotta learn to be more relaxed about, but, you know, me learning to be relaxed in general is a challenge. As far as brown and pink goes, there's this combination. which again was made more for a um, old style Barbie body. So it does fit this body, but it's not like a super sleek fit. I don't want to do something in the multiple pieces for this doll. There's a lot of things I've taken off of other dolls recently. Or just ridiculous. The sweatshirt was made from a um, spoonflower knit sample, just enough to make that sweatshirt. Yeah. Let's see. The, th the thing about the Mycene dolls is they are. They're trendy, but they're also a little, um, how do I say, trendy, but in a refined manner. Maybe that was my, why I never really got into my scene, because they just didn't seem, um, kooky enough. No, they're, they're kind of serious. Which I know that... A doll is only as serious as you want to make them because dolls are all about you imposing your ideas of personality and such on the dolls. But I always thought my scene were a little, a little more fashionable than I'm generally inclined to being. You know.
It's like that is totally the wrong attitude of shirt, but on the other hand, it's an actual Barbie shirt. Not something I made. Maybe I should get into that skirt bag since I was in there recently. I know I was in there. And said, wow, there's a lot of good skirts in here. Maybe I could be inspired by a skirt. Probably not, but maybe. Because now I don't even wear skirts. I looked at and said, well, there's a lot of good skirts in here. Just remember the fact that I did say there's a lot of good skirts in here. <coughs> Let's see. I should be speaking just so I can drown out the... Um, Fallout modding guys. Husband watches. Just because, just because. It's probably more interesting to listen to somebody talk about the technical issues involved in modding Fallout. But you're here to listen to me ramble about boring doll clothes, right? Now, I remember saying, well, there's a lot of great skirts in here, but you know, nothing's jumping out that's really inspiring me right now. And that's Barbie Brand. And that's Barbie Brand. Like I said, the skirts I've been making have been kind of this general shape. Maybe more like the length of this one than as short as this one. But since they're using that pattern I shared recently, they're kind of lined. They're technically not lined because to be lined you cannot see any seams at all inside. And the way those are made, there is a back seam that's very visible. But it's mostly lined. The finishing, the hem finishing and waistband finishing is mostly accomplished through lining and turning it right side out, which is one of those things that might seem like it's more work to do a lining or a facing and then flip that right side out, but trust me, it is so much easier to flip something right side out when it's two pieces sewn together than it is to just try to turn it over all by itself and stitch it in place. That is very much a winter skirt. So this is some old vintage doll skirt someone gave me that I actually do like a lot. I think it might fit the uh, newer Barbie body waists better. And I did wash it actually and got a lot of ick out of it. But it's still not the cleanest white. But I do like, again, there's this, this look of old that you can't get. No matter how much you wrinkle and tea dye something. keep talking, trying to entertain you, trying to keep you occupied and give you something to talk back to, tell me you're making terrible decisions and that you never would have thought of that because it's weird, whatever it is you might be inclined to say to me. You can't say it if I'm not talking. So. Yeah, I have even less of an idea what I do for this doll. Because like I said, I don't really relate to um, fashionable, trendy, refined, maybe refined is the word I want, maybe I'm going to say I don't really relate to refined kinds of dolls. Dolls who know what they're doing with their fashion 
and they know what they're doing with their fashion because they read about it in the uh, places where you read about fashion. Yeah, that didn't really go anywhere, did it? Fashion forward people, trendy people. I am not trendy people. I mean, that's by choice. Although, looking back at the way I dressed in high school when I thought I was being not trendy, I was following trends. I just wasn't following the trends that everyone else at school was following. So the net result was that I seemed weird, but actually I was just a very 90s kid. Very 90s. Color blocked shirts. I haven't had a pair of hammer pants. Like what well, everyone else was wearing. Hyper color shirts and blue jeans and guest jeans. And... Oh, I did have a friend to talk me into getting a pair of guest jeans. Which I think I eventually gave to my cousin, who was much more a follower of fashion than I was. Yes, as a kid I had the, you know, better than you, not like other girls kind of thing, where I was thinking that the fact that I didn't follow fashion somehow set me apart and showed that I was special. But like I said, I was following fashion, I just wasn't following the fashion the other kids at school were following. And of course now I understand that how you dress is just how you dress. If you're trying to make a statement, you're making it. You're either making it by saying, hey look at me, I'm not dressed like other people. Or he's saying, hey, look at me, I am following fashion and I'm showing solidarity with other people by dressing like them. But you don't mock people for what they choose to wear. As long as it's not offensive. If someone wants to be intentionally offensive, then they should be prepared to be criticized. You shouldn't make a statement if you don't want someone to make a statement back at you. Alright, now can I get the little fingers in this? I know I made this shirt. Oh, I'm like, again, thinking about where I was. It's when I was, when my craft room was in the basement here. So like 2011, 2012. So definitely made to fit fashionistas, articulated fashionistas body with the belly button torso. Or did I make it to fit a, you know I might have made it to fit a non-metal body, because it really doesn't feel like it wants to close. You know what, I think I might have actually made this to fit a pivotal body, which I think is just a little bit more slender. And yes, these are working buttons, which I think I mentioned before. I love the fact that I can make working buttons. They of course provide the best, lowest profile, most realistic closure on a shirt, but they're really easy to you know, get just a little bit wrong, and they won't seat right, they won't stay closed. That kind of thing. I think I will leave her in this shirt, but I don't think I'm feeling it with the bird skirt. It's too small, too slim. I want to counterbalance. course, like I said, pattern mixing 101, plaid goes with everything, and so does floral. So, it's like 
look, that's not even any kind of challenge as far as pattern mixing goes. Let's see, I don't remember. I made a skirt originally specifically to go with this shirt, but I don't remember what it was. I think it was a long green, it might have been pleated, printed houndstooth. That's why I keep thinking about this knit houndstooth skirt, but that would again be too very slender silhouettes together. Which might be okay as far as fashion goes. I prefer, usually prefer to have a contrast. Have something be fuller and something be skinnier. That's action figure pants. So I these, I eventually realized, I think are vintage Barbie jeans. shirt because the crotch is so low because we're caught on the calves. dress that will become a jumper if it's put over that shirt. Which, that's always a fun look. But you can't use just any dress for that. Okay. Yeah, I don't think I have no, I don't. That's something else I should put on my list to make more jumpers. in the hair. Let's see, do I want to leave her original earrings in? I guess I will just... Because it's easy. Alright. Shoes and or... Um, socks. So this is the... This is a body with... Um, actually... Yeah, this, I don't know if this was a fashionista's body, because it doesn't have the underbust articulation, but it does have the strung on gymnast style high heel feet, strung on with the rubbery bits that you, one customizer called them dog bone bits, rubbery dog bone. So this is the original legs for this body. Let's see. She needs heels. Of course, I'd like to be able to put her in flats, but she does not have the capability of wearing that. Let's see if we give her some these go with the ivory, but I mean, the color's there, but oh boy, the style is not. These. I think I have a pair of those. Uh, edited. These are really not quite matching the, I don't know if you call that school's girl style of the rest. I have these weird. They're um, sports shoes, but they're sculpted to contour with the heel foot, which 
which I mean, on the one hand, it's a nice idea because that always annoyed me to put a shoe on these high heel feet and then just have it pointing off in that direction, but it's kind of weird at the same time. Of course, I did like they eventually came up with the idea of like building the heel inside the shoe. So we will put on what appears to be a flat foot shoe that inside contours to the heel. I know those are based on like the trend of real life, trying to give people a little extra height by putting them in shoes like that. I mean this, this shoe is like that. It has the heel inside, but it really would not match. Really would not match this. I mean, I can't look at these without thinking of them as their late 90s um, channeling the seven, mid to early 70s look that was so popular then. That's, that's just what they are. So let's see what else could she possibly wear. I don't really have any navy shoes. The closest I have to navy are these um, Novi Stars boots that do happen to fit. Barbie feet, but that doesn't seem right. Um, I don't have maroon shoes either. You've already seen my um, ivory shoe assortment, which isn't very uh, big. Wait, do I have? Oh, I do have those. I do have maroon shoes. And these are made for night out. I also have those. Very dark red shoes. Alright, so I do have two options for maroon shoes. Alright, first we'll try these that are made for 1990s Barbie high heel feet, which is what the high heel gymnast feet are. Which, ooh, those look so tiny now for the front, but I loved these shoes in the 90s. I could go with that, or I could try, let's see, yeah, these do have right and left. Uh, of course, I do like these because they just, they're a little bit bigger, so they get the foot a little more balance. But other modern dolls could possibly wear those. So I'm going to go ahead and put this doll in the 90 shoes because she can. Of course now the shirt is kind of tucked because it is so short in front. But like I said, the waistband on the skirt is a little large compared to a Barbie waist. The ivory is more limiting to possible matches for this than the red is. Oh, maybe I will go back to the birds. At least that'll give me a uh, landing spot to stay at while I think about options. I made this skirt without a pattern. <laughs> That's why it's a little, um, a little. Maybe. I mean, as far as bulk goes, I could say she has puppy shoulders, so there's bulk up there. This bird shirt on. 
Of course, if I do every, if I do use this tunic shirt, I actually have a pair of bloomers somewhere that I made that match. I mean, in theory, they're in here somewhere. But that doesn't mean they're actually in here. They could be being worn. This is 90s Burbies pants that can't do me second hand already cut a little short like that. But I kind of like the way it makes them into, um, I don't know if they just call them wide leg cropped pants now. Gaucho is what I grew up calling them. Gaucho pants. Of course, I like the lizard shorts. Yeah, lizard shorts. But again, that's white, not ivory. I mean, this is a little more ecru than ivory, but it's not white. And the white is glaring. Glaringly incorrect against that shirt. I don't mind, of course, mixing the print between these two. They're even sort of similarly drawn in that there's not a lot of detail. But you know, so mixing ivory and white, I just can't, can't take. Said it with some mockery of myself. Yeah, here's the... Ooh, maybe those. Here's the bloomers that go with that bird tunic. But speaking of bloomers... Of course, I think the green is going to coordinate with the maroon better. I mean, it's not a Christmassy green, so putting the green and the red isn't going to immediately make you think of Christmas. We'll try this. This is a pair of bloomers that James sent that he probably got off of Etsy. And yes, I know you should take the shoes off first, but yeah, that's a little better. I mean, these aren't as puffy as they could be. I think these bloomers might have been meant for blow. Oh, they have a bow on them, so this is backwards. Maybe it's backwards. These bloomers are probably meant for Blythe. Alright. Right now I'm going to say the idea of using these bloomers with the bow on them with this shirt actually will make sense because the high front of the shirt will show the bow off. And love and blue are a uh, I know there's entire, there used to be entire flicker groups dedicated to mixing teal and red. So I know there's some precedent for that. I literally spent half an hour on this doll. Alright, so we're done. Let's see, do I want to do anything with her hair? No, I like her hair. Loose and free. I actually don't know what these are from. They're like bows on clips. <laughs> I have allergic to one clip to one of my ink pens. Yes, that just flew across the room when I was able to find it. <laughs> As opposed to the things I usually drop and lose. steal something from another doll. Yes, I stole this from the doll I dressed in the previous video, put that necklace on just to match the blue to something else. I may or may not create another necklace for that other doll. Okay, so that was one doll. 
Hey, at least I matched the blue with an accessory and not another bandage. All right, and I have two more dolls, so I'm going to take this one. This is the... And if I thought that the my scene was a little um, unrelatably refined, I have this one. Top model Teresa. Okay, camera, you know it's a face. Are you actually going to focus on it? So she has wild makeup, and there is some pink in the back of her hair, but it does largely get lost, but still. I had not realized this doll had pink on the head when these dolls were new. This is originally had a model muse body. She's now on a uh, swap and styles fashionista's body. And she will need something... Gosh, I don't even know. What do I have? that would fit a doll with such dramatic makeup. Can we go 60s with her? I could go 60s with her. That's kind of a modern take on 1960s makeup. Or actually, when I was digging through the bag of shirts, at one point, where did I put it? I saw the... Come on, where'd he go? Where'd he go? The little twin star shirt and said, you know what? That matches her colors. But would I put that dramatic makeup on little twin stars? Of course, knowing now, I mean, like, when this doll came out, this kind of dramatic makeup was not an everyday look. Now this is an everyday look for some people. So I guess I could do more casual clothes with that makeup. Or do a, the reproduction 1960s dress. This is a reproduction. This is from the from James. He got that reproduction Friends 3-pack. He gave me bits and pieces of it. Thanks so much. And I know this is new because it still had those tiny little in it. Also it says Barbie Repro inside, but even without seeing that, it originally had those tiny, tiny little swift tatches in it. So if I looked, I could probably find the holes that those left in the dress. And I feel like this eye makeup could go with just a t-shirt and jeans, but I don't have any jeans that really fit. Well, I have the jeans, but I'm pretty sure they've been used. I don't have any available jeans to really fit this body. <sighs> okay, the problem with using this dress with this body is it dips down just low enough that you can see the swapping styles seam. Maybe if I pull it back some, it won't be so. I don't know, it could be kind of a 60s look. It's one of those 1960s looks for people who aren't really familiar with how 1960s looks looked, and I'm a little familiar with the way 1960s looks looked, so that's not, that makeup is not quite passable to me as being 1960s style. Did that make sense? into modern. Sort of modern. I made this a few years ago when uh, skater dresses were on the way out. Of course, now that just makes her makeup look like 1970s or 60s or 70s or even 80s idea of the future. This dress is really made to fit a slightly more modern body, so it's not the best fit on the fashionista's belly button shaped body. Yeah. 
And most of the stuff I have is really tailored toward the fashionista's belly button body. But I guess it's been long enough since those were common that I am starting to get more and more things that are no longer suited for that body that I've made. Because you know I'm not buying fashionistas for their clothes. I mean, nothing against people who are and do. It's just I have not been buying dolls for clothes for a very long time now. Because you, you might be aware of the fact that I sew. I don't know if you knew that, but I sew. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to try the twin, st little twin star shirt on her after all. Floppy wrist. Let's just see how much time is left on the card. There should be enough. This shouldn't take hours. Alright, now I need to find a little twin star skirt. I, I think I am going to go with a little twin stars stuff for her. Just because. Or do I have, I might have a doll wearing a little twin star skirt. Because I don't remember seeing it in here just now. When I was sorting through everything. I do have other things she could wear. I don't remember seeing it in here though, do you? I have a lot of other skirts she could wear. Actually, I might not be laughing at that so much. I really like this skirt, but I made it for um, fashion royalty. So it only barely squeezes onto a, a fashion really not yet, so it's really, really small. It just barely squeezes onto a, a modern Barbie body. This is not, I do not consider this though really print mixing though, because these came all printed together on a coordinate. It was a um, custom work I was doing for somebody's doll. So for some of these dolls, long, long ago, and uh, they sent me like a quarter yard, a half yard of cloth that had all these different prints on it that were meant to be cut apart and quilted in instant coordinate, which is fun. Oh, there's the twin star shirt, which is fun to have all that stuff right there in a coordinate, but. I want to dismissively say, where's the challenge in that? But you know my idea about print mixing is if you sew it together, it goes together. So it's not even where's the challenge in that. It's that, like, dude, you don't need somebody to hand feed you coordinating prints. Just pick stuff out and sew it together. All right, so this is the actual Little Twin Stars skirt I have. But I'm going to try these other skirts on, just because this looks absolutely ridiculous. But if you have makeup that's dramatic, why shouldn't you be dramatic other overall? Of course, this is really, I believe, um, an underskirt more than anything, because this just looks terrible. But still, that's fun. This is that fabric that we did finally find someone on eBay who sells it. And even the person on eBay says, I don't know what this stuff is called. I've got my source of it. I don't know how to find more. But this is one that was, I believe, custom made for Mattel. It has a heat sensitive color change print in it. It's hard so you can see it at the right angle. one of these could work with this little Twin Stars shirt. This is a 80s or 90s, late 80s or early 90s Barbie skirt. 
I mean, this could work with little twin stars not only because of the coloration, but it has two stars on it. So that could work too. I mean, I'll probably go with the proper skirt unless one of these just jumps out and I love it. This is a Barbie skirt, possibly Cali Girl or My Scene. It's from roughly that era. I mean, the colors definitely work with Little Twin Stars. It's a little more of a beachy theme. It's also from before they started using the finer Velcro all the time, so it has that really... I mean, this has a really coarse Velcro in it just because it is relatively old, but this is not that old and it still has the coarse Velcro in it. I mean, this has the finer Velcro in it. It's not Velcro brand, it's hook and loop tape. And Velcro brand might make this stuff this fine. It's technically called low profile hook and loop tape, but they don't sell it to consumers if they do. The only light, really lightweight, ultra fine, real profile hook and loop tape they sell it has adhesive on the back. And that's a pretty good match, too. I might have to take your head off and put something in to give a little more tension on the bottom of the neck knob. I won't do that on video, though. You already had to deal with me brushing a doll's hair in the last video. Alright, this is a skirt I made. It's based on my five pocket jeans pattern, but in skirt form. Well, technically I made this for a live body, so it's a little large in the waist on this. Alright, now the actual proper real skirt. Let's see how that looks. I think the only time I've had this complete outfit on a doll before, it was some vintage Hong Kong clone doll. Yeah, the real thing is the best. Alright, maybe I will do this now. I have this stash of red tabs and things right here. And as long as I don't accidentally trim this so much that it breaks, this will go fairly quickly. If you don't know the bread tag method, this is something Dull Dirt came up with, Chris, where you take one of these things that holds the end of your bread bag closed. And I know these can be kind of scarce these days. You trim it, and usually I keep better track of the little bits like that. I just, I don't know if you heard that one, just go flying off behind the trunk. I mean, I will trim this again to be closer to the proper neck size. I'm just like pre-trimming it. And this is a sprue cutter. This is something made specifically for cutting through little bits of plastic. It's another one of those things I learned about from husbands or gaming stuff. All right, this bread tag is pretty big. So we'll see it overlap that. And the bread tags I and mean, they're more commonly recommended when you have like a vintage Ken head that you trimmed the neck knob off of and you want to put it on a modern body. But it can work on any doll head to make the neck just a little um a little more uh, solid. Like if you put
put a head on a body and the neck is super floppy. The problem is, like, this bread tag was a little large. So getting it up into the head is not going easily. Yeah, it's broken. The other option is to wrap the neck peg with some um, clear elastic. Which can also give it a little more friction. Honestly, the um, bread tag works better, but it can be finicky. I said that one. The bread tag was too wide. Yeah, that's still not really worried. Oh, and her bangs are almost up now. This is one of the dolls who I ironed the bangs back into place. this on camera and here I am and this is like 47 minutes and there's another doll left and what am I doing I'm hurrying I'm getting all messed up don't want to have to cut this apart because I'm not buying new dolls very often. My chance to get these elastic bands is not very, uh, not something that happens a lot anymore. So I want to not have to cut this apart to get it off the neck. I mean, I could leave it on the neck, but I want to have it and be able to use for doll hair. Or uh, making something fit at the waist underneath either skirt that you'll never see, or holding things in place. I mean, honestly, the better than bread tags are these things. And you can snip into them but they're a lot harder to find. There are things that dolls used to have to make sure that the twist ties holding them into the boxes didn't um, get pulled through the cardboard backer, but they don't package dolls in boxes with twist ties punched through the cardboard anymore. So you don't see those much these days. Keep an eye open. I think sometimes you'll see things that aren't dolls that are packed with that stuff. And I just cut that too close because I'm trying to hurry. Because like I said, I shouldn't even be doing this on camera. But I started doing it on camera. It's nice of all those things that are breaking off to land in the box. Maybe this one will work better since it's a much smaller piece of plastic. I think it broke again, but her head is a little more stable. 
a little less floppy. aren't in too bad a shape, but boy is her ponytail badly assembled. Like I said, I am terrible with ponytails. I mean, you won't notice if I keep the ponytail all spread out, because black on black is slimming because it hides everything. Alright, so she needs shoes and stuff. Was originally a necklace in this set. It might have been that little blue one that I've been bouncing around from doll to doll. I feel like it's not a choker. Alright, definitely can do pink shoes on this. Now, do we want to do sweet pink shoes or do we want to do big stomping pink shoes? These very 90s shoes. Or do some surely probably have a pair of pumps that fits the color scheme better. Yeah, these fashionistas, the older fashionistas, the style shoes don't really, or feet, don't really work with the old Barbie pumps. The 90s pumps, those iconic shoes. See, it seems like I've had these aren't chrome shoes, these are actual, possibly reproduction, party shoes. Where's the other one? And I was just saying, those um, 90s pumps, 80s, 90s pumps don't really work on these feet because these feet are just a little bit smaller. Remember, these are vintage clone shoes. I was fortunate enough to find a sealed pack of vintage clone accessories, Totsy stuff, in a thrift store a few years ago. I was just like I had some of the shoes from that pack on a doll and the feet split, but I can't remember if it was one of the fashion, the older fashionista. I get confused when I, th when I talk about fashionistas, I'm thinking of the dolls from around 2009 who had these articulated bodies. I know that was not the beginning of the fashionistas line, and it's definitely not the end of the fashionistas line, but to me those are the epitome of fashionistas. But they're little skinny feet. Or don't want to give her the old sports shoes. Or purple shoes. Let's see, most of my purple shoes are actually for beyond these, but one of these has a split ankle strap. Most of my fashionistas, my purple shoes are actually for the older pre-fashionistas. Or pre belly button Barbie body style shoes. Let's see, these could work, but these are teen skippers, so they're actually for a larger foot with a shallower ankle. Of course, here's one of those that I was talking about earlier. And has the appearance of a flat, but actually being made for for um, high heeled feet. And actually, as much as I like these, like I said, I know I had some 
Yeah, it was this style. Some that were on a modern foot and it split them, so I'm a little hesitant to put those on a somewhat more modern foot. And the current dolls, I think their feet are a little bit bigger than these. But anyway, I'm going to go with these on that. And the question of accessories. Again, this is made for larger dolls. Sometimes it looks okay. I mean, I made it for larger dolls. It's not like it was manufactured for larger dolls. Sometimes it looks okay on a Barbie-sized doll. Sometimes it does not. Where's that bracelet? I think this is a brass bracelet. It has a little bit of blue on it. Yeah, I'm going to go with that. And... Oh man, too bad I can't get this to clip around the ponytail. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing if I'm too far up again. Sorry. I would like to put something on the ponytail. This is a weaker ribbon that actually sits really weird. And I have two of them, so I tend to want to use them both. Now there's this thing. It's a little tiny bit of lace that I got in a lot of things that I just, I mean, it was so tiny, I just sewed it into a loop because I have no idea what it is or what I'll ever do with it. It's totally the wrong colors for that, but it can still be fun on the ponytail. It's a lot more peach. And brights and pastels, though. I could do this. I'll put this. This is a neck corsage floral decoration thing from the uh, Jack Specific Josie and the Pussycats. And I've always liked it, but have not liked it because I feel like the flower should be off center, but then the Velcro starts to show, and when you put the Velcro back, and the flower is center. And I don't like that on the neck, but that could work on the ponytail. Why not? Okay, are we good? Unless I'm gonna throw a pair of goggles on her too. Alright. So <laughs> I have another doll to dress. This video is gonna go over an hour just because, like I said, I'm very bad about pacing myself and not trying to get everything done all at once. So the last doll is the Surf City Midge. It did not um, raid my existing assembled dolls to find a made do body for her. She is on one of the nicer articulated fashionistas bodies with the torso. The only nicer body would be the ones that had the articulated ankles that were the Barbie style dolls at the very end. Although I don't think they had the underbust joint. So I mean, you can pop these legs off and swap the legs around, although the style dolls may have had a different sized hip. Like, the current fashionistas have a different sized hip, and swapping is not as straightforward as it used to be. Anyway, so this midge, what shall she wear? I might go just straight to the aqua apple dress. It's another dress I made with working buttons, although instead of tiny little button buttons, they are beads. 
so it doesn't always um, close properly. And I also made this dress for an RD Susie originally. So it's kind of technically not quite Barbie size. But it wasn't uh, terribly accurately fitted. Because I made it so long ago, it was uh, uh, a lot more prone to improvising. I mean, I still improvise a lot. But I also have had, um, let's see, that was 2006 or seven. And that's 2021. So, you know, at least 14 years of working on my patterns and sewing skills since then. So, things, I mean, things still don't always fit when I make them, but they're a little more likely to fit. Of course, if I can't get this one at the waistband buttoned, and yeah, the one above it's popped open. And these tiny, these little beads aren't the best buttons. I know I've gotten this waistband button before, but it's, it's not going now. That's a little brighter than she is anyway. You didn't think this video would be over that fast. If the doll were less busty, if it, you know, could actually fit this, maybe I should go ahead and just put this in the... Yeah, not, it's not really suitable for the much smaller doll. Bag. This doll's just slightly smaller than Barbie. Let's see, how's this look? I know I had, like I said, I had Surf City Midge in the early 2000s. I'm pretty sure I left her on her original body. I don't think I put her on an action figure body. Or, see, back then the only articulated Barbie option would have been the gymnast body, which has never been great. Even though curling the hands and making the feet smaller. Curling the hands and smalling the feet help it a lot. But I cannot remember how I dressed this doll back then. So that's, um, that's passable. That works with her coloration. Or, you know, I'm reaching for this thing that I always use. short but because the hanky I used for the spirit is sheer and open. It's so sheer you can see there was actually some print. This must have been taken from near the salvage of the original cloth. And there's like print that was on the handkerchief that's showing through. I will say, I mean not to recreate an outfit I had before but if it's good it's good right? In the past, I have used this bird skirt under here, but I've also, hold on, I've also used the lace shorts that Cosmo made. Like I said, I have used this on dolls a lot. Of course, I could change it up a little and put the bloomers under it. I think those are yeah, the other shorts for here.
most imaginative outfit because I've had it on so many dolls, but it's so pretty. Not only is the handkerchief vintage, but the calico that I used for the bodice is from a Dress Me doll that I was able to dismantle the outfit and so things. I actually think I made something more, something more substantial than this that I sold and there was enough of it left over to make this bodice. So that always, I always liked that about it. Do I want to do ridiculous? Yeah, here's the other pair of those. These are for larger dolls. The other one that I already used was for Momoko size. These have such a huge hole. These are Barbie. to get that space tight stuff twisted around so that everything looks weird. I also originally made these for fashion royalty Nadia, so they like come up to the armpits on Barbies. James. Don't want to use these. One pair of these female action figure stockings in white, and I have a bunch in black. And the problem with the black is that they stain things. Imagine that. These really only stay in place if you like latch them up over the top into the articulation gap. But uh don't want to do that. I'm gonna involve taking the shorts off. Too lazy. Too lazy, I say, is I spend a lot of money spend another 10, 15 minutes dressing this doll. Yeah. I would have to take the shorts off. Get these, on. these are made for Disney Witch dolls. They're way too small technically for Barbie, but they will stretch up enough to fit on Barbie. And I really like these. Oh, there's a run in them too. But if they are on absolutely hard vinyl, the lace will stain. I don't think I have anything in this sort of soft. I can't remember what shoes I've used with this before. I see like a solid fit. I think those might be fashion royalty shoes. I'm not sure. They could be Barbie. He flow gave them to me. Flow, of course, has given me a lot of good stuff that I'm not quite sure what it is over the years. There's a little piece of double sided tape stuck randomly to the side of that. I can't imagine where that would have come from. I say as I stick the double sided tape back in the bin. Or 
or do I want to match the blue? these shorts to help hold up the stockings. Pull up until they the uh, stretch lace gets pulled into the gap around the hip articulation. And then there's cat hair and then bolster that with the shorts. a little more formal than I thought it would be. Cat hair, go away! But... Let's see about volunteering. Wait. I know that one fell away. Just want to use that one. Just want to close it and put it back. It's a little late. I'm a little tired. It's probably past my normal bedtime. Oh yeah, it's almost 10 o'clock. I'm usually in bed by 10. I am no fun. Well, I'm not exciting. That's why I'm here making a soothing background noise doll dressing video. I mean, even if it weren't coronavirus time, I would not be out doing anything on a Saturday night. Never have. Probably never will. Alright, necklace in place. Put this. I've been trying to put this on a doll all day. actually. This straight pin is so bent. And her hair is actually center part. You can't see what I've done. I've done something alarming with the bow. All right. So 
I don't know in the end. But why it was wise to try to dress all twelve of these dolls in one day that I have. So this is going to turn out just several videos that I won't even start showing you for a while. So the three last dolls I dressed are my scene. Um, I've already forgotten. Is this do they reuse the name Chelsea? I think this renamed Chelsea on a fashionista's articulated body with the old style knees. Top model Teresa on a swap and styles fashionista's body. And getting the necklace straight. Surf City Midge on an articulated fashionista's Okay, so I'm sure I will do another big marathon of dressing dolls videos again, but like I said, I'm going to try to post them one a week, whatever I do, so you will have droning doll background noise for a long, long, long time. Thanks for listening.